If you go to any book signings, conferences, or other marketing events with authors, having a professionally made business card can be a huge difference maker. But in order to do that correctly, you've got to provide the right information, a great design, and be able to print them and get them ready to you when you need them. That's why in this video, I'm going to be covering all three of those things so that you as an author can make much better, effective, and efficient business cards for your next event. If you like videos like this and want to learn more about book marketing, go ahead and smash the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to the right so as to get notification of when my next video begins. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into creating professional author business cards. Before we get into the design elements of a good author business card, let's talk about what kind of information you should put on a card and things to think about. One thing you should think about is how personal do you want your card to be? Do you really want to give away your home phone number to a stranger? Or put your personal home address on it? That's up to you, but it's definitely something you should think about. Now, with that said, here's some things most authors include. Your name and title. Either your personal name or your pen name. As for titles, it could just be an uh, as author or something else. Perhaps something more creative that's fitting with your subject matter or genre. Ways to contact you. Could be your email address, professional or personal. For example, I have my Gmail account, but I put my Kindlepreneur email on my cards. If you have an author website, then use that email since it will make you look a lot more authoritative. You can also include your phone number, but again, think twice about putting that in there. Information about your book or authorship. This could be your book title or potentially just your author website. Also, you can include a link to your book, but if you do, make sure to use a short link or of some sort. There are many options online that you can do this uh, for you, but don't make your customer or fan type the entire long URL into their browser. And finally, there is social media. This could be your author Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, etc. However, I'd recommend that you be selective on which ones you put and not put them all on there or else it will clutter up your card. And like your book URL, be sure to use short links for these. Also, if you don't legitimately do a lot of social media, then don't put any of them here. There is nothing worse than someone getting your card and then going to your Twitter and seeing that you never post anything there or do nothing of interest. Now, once you know what uh, you're going to put on the card, you need to consider how it's going to look on your card. And that all starts with the right font selection. Did you know that selecting the right font can really have a deep impact on exactly what meaning you're trying to portray? Let's go ahead and check this out. You see, the top font shows a whimsical statement of love, while the bottom one, well, let's just say that it doesn't look very inviting. There are many different font selections out there, such as serif, sans serif, monospace, and script. These can each give your card some much needed character and direction. Also, look for genre or decade-specific fonts. These can go a long way in making your business card look interesting and relevant. On this card, Kelly's done an awesome job at choosing a font and layout that represents her genre well. Alright, next up is choosing an image for your card, and I highly recommend you do because it's very important to creating that memorable aspect of it. Let's check it out. Some options for an image on your card can be your author logo, if you have one. Your author photo, just make sure it's a good one that represents you and your type of work. Or just use a genre specific or topic specific stock photo. That represents your style and writing or is just an image you really like and kind of symbolizes what you work on. And finally, using one of your book covers can be another excellent image as well. Just be careful though, when using your book cover, people tend to overshare about the book and thus crowd up their card with too much information. Just remember the size of your card. Don't fill one side with a book cover and then the back with a full excerpt or summary. While this can feel like a neat tactic for helping your book sales, remember your card was designed for people to get to know you and better have an ability to reach out to you. So don't clutter up your card and remember, you want your contact info to stand out alongside the rest of the card. Jeannie Y. Shirley does a great job at utilizing her book cover. Awesome card, Jeannie. 
Now that you have an idea of what kind of information you should put on your card, as well as some of the design recommendations, let's take a look at some examples that I found on the 20 Books to 50K author Facebook group. This is a very eye-catching and professional card. It is a great picture selection, and the two-sentence horror story is to die for. Love it. This card makes me want to set sail and go hunting for Flint's treasure myself. Her card screams adventure, which is just perfect for her style of writing, and thus instantly lets me know what genre she writes in. Shelley took a unique approach to the standard author business card. She created a magnetic card. If you're anything like me and got kids that want to bring stuff and put on your fridge, you can always find a use for another magnet. This ensures her business card sticks around just a little bit longer. Now this card has many features that makes it a cut above the others. Pun intended. The great use of negative space, the creative hashtag, and the pictures are scarily good. On the flip side, she puts all the right info to inspire her fans to look more. Paul's is another with a uniquely designed card. Instead of the standard rectangle, his cards are folded like a book. Pretty cool choice for an author. When folded, you can clearly see his book series and website, but when opened, you can find all sorts of places to buy. Nice work and marketing work, Paul. Okay, so after looking at some of these sweet business cards, you may be wondering how can you get started in making your own? While there are many companies out there that will print cards for you, one of the most well-known and respected is Vistaprints. That's the one that I use. Major shout out to my wife for creating my set of cards for my birthday. She's pretty awesome. I really like the quality they provide and the price in which you can do it at. These are high quality cards that you can buy in bulk without breaking the bank. Plus, one of the benefits is that once you've created one, your design is saved. So if you ever need more cards, you can just jump on and place another order in seconds. This makes these perfect for any author preparing for any upcoming conferences like the 20 Books to 50K Vegas conference, which I'll be at this year. All right, so in this video, we covered what information to put on your cards, how to design them, some examples, and even a way to make your cards right now in under five minutes. Pretty cool, right? If you have any more questions or you need to know a little bit more, go ahead and check in the description below. I'll have a link to my full article that will give even more details where you can find there. Also, in the comments below, please go ahead and share any other recommendations that you have on business cards, as well as providing an example of yours, if you feel like it, so that other people can see some great author business cards. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button, as well as the little like icon, so that others may find this information as well. And with that, I'm Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur, signing off. Cheers.